month starts straight out of um, college for the students in my class. Yours is one of the, it is the most successful one. Can't fall back to sleep, your thoughts keeping me locked in my mind, replaying everything. And each time I do a stop at the part where you blame me, and I start to blame you too, and I know it's passion that you I'll do like, that oh, to my mind. Crystal, she was in my class, she's on the cover of Forbes magazine. I got the really cool opportunity to actually take graduate level classes. The pressure was definitely on. Hey guys, it's Crystal back at it again with another video. I am so excited to be talking to you guys today. If you don't know me, I make videos on my experience at Columbia University, how to succeed in high school, how to get accepted to Ivy League schools, everything like that. So definitely like and follow if you guys need any advice whatsoever with that and share this video with your friends because friends help friends. Specifically, I graduated a year early from Columbia, which I talk about in another video that I'll link. But while I was there, I majored in creative writing and I studied this thing called the Special Concentration in Business Management, which is basically like a minor where you have to apply and only a few students get accepted every year. So I wanted to talk to you guys today all about what it was like studying business at Columbia as an undergrad, because through the Special Concentration I got the really cool opportunity to actually take graduate level classes at Columbia's business school campus, the Columbia Business School in Manhattanville, which was amazing and I'm so grateful for it. And if any of you guys are interested in starting your own nonprofits or startups, businesses, maybe going into finance, becoming an executive in some company someday, I definitely think that my experience would be very helpful for people to hear about. So I'm going to tell you guys all about it today, what the process of applying was like, what the classes were, literally everything. Plus, I actually have one of my entrepreneurship professors from Columbia on a call in the second half of this video, so definitely stay tuned for that. You're going to want to stick around. Let's get into it. So in order to apply for the special concentration in business management, which I'm just going to call the special concentration from here because that's kind of a mouthful, I had to take three prerequisites before I could even send in the application, and they had to be in econ, statistics, and psychology. So I took out of these classes I'm going to show over here, principles of economics, science of psychology, and introduction to statistics. They were all really good courses, 10 out of 10 would recommend, especially principles of economics. I loved that class and actually the teacher from that class ended up writing one of my Rhodes Scholarship letters of recommendation and I ended up getting nominated by Columbia to apply for the Rhodes, which was an insane experience. Let me know if you guys want a story time about that. Then once I had taken the classes and gotten, well, you had to get a B plus or higher. Thankfully, I got an A in all of them, so that was set. Then I had to write a 500 word essay about why I wanted to get in, what my motivations were, qualifications, all that good stuff. They only take about 40 students a year according to the website, so the pressure was definitely on. And I will say that definitely helped us become such a close-knit group because there were so few of us. We had like luncheons and stuff that I show in other videos and a little celebration at the end for us graduating students. And the actual Manhattanville campus is a little bit of a walk from the main Morningside campus, which is where most of the undergrad dorms and classes are held. It's about a 20 minute walk. So we would all either walk together or take the shuttle every day. We had classes every single day at that campus. So we would definitely get to know each other just by the conversations we'd have, which I thought was really nice. But anyway, we had to answer this question here that I'll show you guys, which is basically, what are your short-term and long-term post-bachelor's degree goals? How will the special concentration in business management help you achieve these goals? And how will the special concentration enhance your current studies at Columbia? So the reason why I wanted to study business in undergrad was because during my gap year before starting at Columbia, I had launched my tutoring, academic consulting, and college counseling company, My IB Education, and it was really blowing up. And I wanted to make sure I had all the skills necessary to be a really good CEO, take care of all you guys that I work with, and make sure that I was delivering just absolutely the best stuff that I possibly could. I mean, I help kids with applying to college. Every one of our students gets into an Ivy or a top 10, I swear, like I'm not even exaggerating. 
applying to summer programs, finding really cool extracurriculars and contests and competitions to apply to. I help them build nonprofits and their own startups. And this is all really meaningful work to me. So I wanted to be able to deliver it in the best way possible. Email me if you ever need any help in any of those areas, tutoring, test prep. We do anything and everything in the world of college counseling. So I got your back. Once I was in, there were some classes that I had to take, but we did have some flexibility. So I had to take either one of two, they're called finance core classes, and the one that I took was called financial accounting, which, not gonna lie, kind of brutal, but the professor was really sweet, and you know what? We made it through. In my video about going to visit the Columbia campus in Paris, you can see that I literally had to take the midterm for that class the morning before my flight, so that was... An interesting experience and then I had to take two out of three managerial core classes and I just to take the ones called strategy formulation and marketing management just because i had been told that leadership and organization was like kind of a fluff class and I mean I knew exactly what I was doing this for I wanted to make sure that I could deliver the most for my company that I was running and learn as much as I could so I really gravitated towards the classes that I knew were gonna push me as much as possible to do that we also got to choose electives that we wanted to take, so one of mine was Economics of Gender, which I took over at Barnard. That was a pretty chill class. It was not the hardest in the world. Um, yeah, it was great. It was really interesting. I learned so much. I am still impacted by the statistics that we learned about the disparity between women in the workforce and men, and honestly, it drives me so much to be the best startup founder and woman in business that I can possibly be. Hashtag girl boss, hashtag CEO. And the other elective I took was this psychology elective called thinking and decision making because I really wanted to be able to get into the minds of consumers and get a sense of how do they make the decisions that they do and why do they make the purchases that they do so that I could make sure that I was keeping that in mind and knowing the science behind every marketing decision that I made. In addition to those classes, when I was a little baby freshman before I ever actually even got accepted to the special concentration, I petitioned to be able to take this graduate level entrepreneurship class and the professor of that class is now on the advisory board of my Ivy education and I have him on for a call so let's hop over there and learn even more about studying entrepreneurship at Columbia. Hey guys, I'm so excited to be here with Professor McGuire who taught me at Columbia when I was just a little freshman trying to petition to get into his grad school class, which is called Entrepreneurship, Developing and Implementing New Ideas. He was kind enough to let me into the class and I mean, it was an amazing experience. I actually got to work on a business plan for my Ivy education, which you guys all know and love. And we actually pitched our businesses at the end. It was so cool, very Shark Tank. And I'm so excited to have him on the channel here and talk with him about what it's like to study business at Columbia and how you guys can get involved. Great. Well, thank you very much for having me. I uh, I really appreciate it. And um, you were a very memorable student, and I'm glad that um, you took the course and that we've kept in touch. Thank you so much. It was truly one of the best classes that I had taken at Columbia. Really, really a life-changing opportunity. And I'm just interested if you can tell everyone watching what class or other classes did you teach at Columbia? Was that the only one or were there others? Yeah, so um, I just teach this entrepreneurship class and I teach it three times per year, fall, spring, and summer. Fall and spring, it's in person. And during the summer, I teach it online just to give people who don't want to be in New York City an opportunity to, uh, to take the class. That was me. I did it in the summer cohort, summer 2020. So why did you choose to teach entrepreneurship? So I've been a lifelong entrepreneur. I graduated college a long time ago and I worked for a bank that's now JP Morgan Chase for three years. I understood that that wasn't the fit for me. And so I started my own business and I never looked back. I've started a bunch of businesses in my career. And about seven years ago, I was lucky enough to have the opportunity to teach an international business course in a summer program um, and I loved it and I got great reviews and I just wanted to do more of it. And 
about two years or three years later, I was fortunate enough to be hired by Columbia to teach entrepreneurship there. And I've tried to develop that program into um, something more than it was and been pretty successful and a lot of satisfied students. Absolutely. And you can count me among them. I definitely see that pattern. We were actually just talking about this before we started filming where a lot of Columbia students also go into finance. So always excited to, you know, show people that there is another path where you can be a self-starter if that appeals to you. And why did you choose to teach at Columbia specifically? I'm super curious to know if you think there are any opportunities or resources that Columbia specifically has or that students can uniquely access there. I think especially people listening to this video who might be wondering about that at Columbia would love to know if there's anything that you would recommend or just why Columbia for business to teach or learn. Sure. I mean, I think the motto of Columbia's business school is we're at the center of business, right? Being in New York. Um, why I chose to teach at Columbia was um, I have an undergraduate and a graduate degree from Columbia. So there's like an affiliation there. I really feel close to the university. Um, and I live in Greenwich, Connecticut. So it's very easy for me to get to and it, it just worked. Um, and obviously it's an Ivy League school and one of the top schools in the country. So, um, you know, I'm very happy with that. Can you talk a little bit about the entrepreneurship background that you mentioned, um, you know, any kinds of startups that you founded and how you use that to teach entrepreneurship in business, like why you think kind of Columbia wanted to see that in their professors, which I personally really appreciate. Yeah, sure. So um, first of all, I don't have a PhD. Um, so I've what they call a scholar practitioner. I'm someone who um, has a scholarly background, but also has done what they're teaching. And I think that's a really strong feature of um, some of the professors at Columbia, right? We just didn't study about entrepreneurship. We actually did it and studied about it. So um, I've started about seven businesses in my life. I won't tell you how old I am, but I'm a lot older than I look. Um, it started out from a commodity trade and finance company that I started when I left the bank and invested and started in um, two technology companies, a streaming media company and an offshore software development company. And then most recently, um, I started a company called Simbridge, uh, which is a digital asset, or I should say was a digital asset platform. Uh, I raised about $35 million for that built it with two co-founders from um, an idea and no employees to a great idea with 40 employees. And uh, at the end of last year, I exited from that business. And now I'm focusing on teaching full time. And I have a new initiative that maybe I'll speak to a little bit later. Um, that's in the teaching space that I'm really excited about. Yes, we will definitely get into that. I would definitely love to know if you have any exciting stories that you wanted to share of Columbia students that you've taught hitting it big with companies designed in your class, because I mean, that's what the whole class is about designing a company and taking it from just an idea to fruition or even afterwards and just kind of like these students that might have done really cool things. Sure. Yeah. So, um, it's a lot about experimentation, right? Some of the students that are in the class want to experiment with entrepreneurship. They're not certain it's the right time for them to launch a business, right? They, um, Many of the students from Columbia want to go work in investment banking or for consulting firms. And I can understand that. That's the track that I followed, right? Get a big name on your resume and get some experience and learn and then go out and start your own business. So I don't see a ton of starts straight out of um, college for the students in my class, but I have seen a few. And honestly, and you know, I'm not just saying that because you have me here, yours is one of the, it is the most successful one, right? If I won't disclose your revenues or your success or, and you've shared that with me, but you clearly have achieved everything that you set out to for your business that we talked about in the class. And I'm really, you know, proud that I have had you in the class and you know, someday I'll be like, oh, look at Crystal. She was in my class. She's on the cover of Forbes magazine. 
So, um, yeah. Well, I'm definitely very honored. And I was also just curious, can you speak to how you help students start successful businesses, um, I guess, kind of as an individual and then also as a representative of Columbia and what students can find there? Sure. So what I the way the class is structured is we do academic readings for each class and we read uh, a case about a successful business and we learn from those, but we take what we learn and we put it into action. The class is really hands-on. It's like, as you as you know, um, building out your business idea and your business model and defining your go-to-market strategy and what's your customer value proposition. And then putting this all together into a pitch deck that you then, for your final exam, pitch to investors Um I grade you, but the investors give you real world feedback. And that's really helpful. So I think one of the differentiators for the class is it's not theoretical. It's very hands on. And uh, I get some really positive feedback from students. And as you know, there's a lot of grad students in our class and a lot of grad students from Copenhagen Business School and business schools in Paris and France who come to Columbia for a semester to study. And they're shocked with the way the class format is because in Europe, it's all about just sitting in a lecture and listening where this class is really engaging in a, in a, it's a discussion about entrepreneurship. Yes, I will always remember literally having to pitch to real business owners and investors at the end of the class. I'll share with you guys, I had a really funny situation where they didn't think that the numbers that I was showing, not in my projections, but that we had already done were real. And they were very confused as to whether it was a projection or not, or kind of what I was talking about since we had already been profitable. And so explaining that was one of the highlights of my existence so far. That was a very funny experience. And so as you mentioned earlier, you're now bringing that to other students who aren't just at Columbia, which is especially a reason why I wanted to make sure that we could let you guys know about this. If you're signed up for my email blasts, you might have been seeing this already, but he is launching this really exciting program where it's teaching the same material as I actually got to learn at Columbia. So I definitely wanted to make sure you guys are aware of this if you want to talk a little more about it. Sure, absolutely. So I launched a program in the fall of 2022 um, called Ivy Entrepreneurs. And the purpose of that was, there was really three purposes. One is to make high quality entrepreneurship education available to anyone, right? Not everyone's fortunate enough to matriculate at Columbia and pay the costs of Columbia. Um, So it was about accessibility. It was also about me wanting to see more launches of the businesses from the students I teach, right? That's really fulfilling for me. So I want to focus on actually um, educating students who are in the process or will launch businesses much like you did, right? I get a lot of pleasure seeing how successful um, you are. And um, also, I'd like to ultimately invest in some of those businesses that come through the Ivy Entrepreneurship Program, um, or I should say Ivy Entrepreneur Entrepreneurship Program, um, And invest in some of those businesses, you know, invest and bet on some of the entrepreneurs who come through the program, having seen them go through the course and understand, like, who's really dialed in. Um, And this summer, uh, we're launching two cohorts for specifically for high school students. Um, Most of the first two cohorts that we had, cohort one and cohort two, are typically people who have graduated college and have been in the workforce for one to four years and realize that they don't want to work for the investment banks or the consulting firms anymore. They want to go out and start their own business and create a quality of life that really speaks to them. Um, But yeah, I'm I'm very happy that you've made a shout out to your um, following about the high school program. And I'd love to um, see some of your your students or people who are thinking about working with you um, apply for the for the summer program. I absolutely agree. I know that one of the biggest things we work with over here at My Ivy Education is helping students find summer programs. And I think that one of the most exciting things about yours, which I have never seen in a summer program before, and I am 
the summer program queen. That is what we do. Um, is that you offer the opportunity to win a large amount of potential funding, ranging from like the thousand or couple thousands, all the way up to winning teams can compete for ten thousand dollars by pitching their companies. And I do think that is just so unique and so valuable because I have so many kids who are starting nonprofits, startups, and literally everything from the product field to virtual software. And I think there's so much that they can get out of that. So definitely super happy to talk about it. And basically, you guys, if you are interested, just email us and I will put you in touch with Professor McGuire. You should definitely reach out because like I said, like summer programs is my job. I make it my mission to know everything that's out there. And this truly has unique aspects that I've just never seen before. Cool. Thank you for that, you know, um, the accolades. And I think it's important to to realize and to tell people that, you know, this program's a little bit different than some of the other summer programs you might be putting on your college application. So, you know, I think it's got a coolness factor as well, even if you're not going to, you know, launch a hugely successful business like Crystal has. Thank you very much. And thank you so much, Professor McGuire, for coming on the channel. It's been so fun to get to talk to you. And I think that people are going to learn so much from this conversation. If you guys enjoyed this video, then of course, be sure to like, hit the notifications bell, and subscribe to this channel for lots more insider info about Columbia, studying business, college in general, the Ivy League. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.